mnemonic neurons. Here we start with the relations of the shoulder joint, the pulse of the shoulder joint, arterial supply, and nerve supply. So first of all, we shall discuss the relations of shoulder joint. In order to understand the relations of shoulder joint, here we draw a small line diagram. Now this is the section of shoulder joint, small line diagram. Now here, peripherally attached will be the glenoidal labrum. So this is where we show the glenoidal labrum. Then we are going to show the <coughs> capsular attachment. So the capsular attachment which is <coughs> around the glenoidal labrum and uh, superiorly there is a space <coughs> for the passage of the tendon of the long head of biceps and so from supraglenoid tubercle. So we are leaving that space. Now, Relations superior, inferior, anterior, posterior. So superiorly, there are three structures which are related to the shoulder joint. The first structure that is related to the shoulder joint will be presence of supraspinatus muscle. So please draw a sectional view. This is the section of supraspinatus muscle. So this is supraspinatus. Just above supraspinatus, there will be one bursa which is known as subacromial bursa. So here we are going to draw subacromial bursa. So this structure is subacromial bursa. Above the subacromial bursa, the third structure will be coracoacromial arch. So we are going to draw over here acromion process. This is the acromion process and over here we are going to draw coracoid process. In between the acromion process and coracoid process we are going to show attachment of ligament, coracoacromial ligament. So this is coracoacromial ligament. So these are the three structures which are related superior to the shoulder joint. Supraspinatus, subacromial bursa and above subacromial bursa is entire coracoacromial arch which consists of <coughs> acromial process, coracoid process and coracoacromial ligament. So here we are going to name these structures. This will be the supraspinatus muscle. Over here this is the subacromial bursa and this is the coracoacromial ligament. So superior structures are complete. Superior relations of shoulder joint are complete. These three structures. Then inferior. Inferior shoulder joint, the following structures are related. These relations are very important. Sometimes these relations are asked in MCQs or one mark question answer. So the inferior relations of the shoulder joint will be the first structure. So here, we are going to show one cross section of muscle and this muscle will be the long head of triceps. Long head of triceps which is related inferior to the shoulder joint. So here we are going to name long head of triceps. Then next structure will be the axillary nerve. So here we are going to show axillary now and along with axillary now there will be the posterior circumflex humeral artery. So here we are going to draw posterior circumflex humeral artery. So therefore here we can name this as axillary now and this we shall name it as posterior circumflex humeral artery. Three structures which are related inferior to shoulder joint, long of triceps, axillary nerve and posterior circumflex humeral artery. So three structures superior, three structures inferior. Now 
there are three structures which are related anterior to the shoulder joint. This is anterior, this is posterior. So if this is the <coughs> glenoid cavity, here this is anterior and over here <coughs> this is posterior. So anteriorly the three structures will be, once again over here we are going to show the section of subscapularis muscle. So anteriorly this is the first structure subscapularis muscle. Second structure will be short head of biceps femoris. So the short head of biceps femoris attached to carotid process. And third structure will be coracobrachialis, which is also attached to coracoid process. These are the three structures which are related anterior to the shoulder joint. Here, this is subscapularis muscle. One, two. This is the short head of biceps. And three, this is coracobrachialis muscle. Three structures which are related anterior to the shoulder joint. Now posterior. Posteriorly there are two structures which are related exactly posterior to the shoulder joint and those two structures will be, if you draw over here, this will be infraspinatus muscle <coughs> and over here this will be the teres minor muscle. So infraspinatus and teres minor, two structures that are related posteriorly. Infraspinatus and teres minor. Here we complete the relations of the shoulder joint. Superior, inferior, anterior, posterior. Now, <clears throat> there is the long head of biceps which is covered with synovial sheath which will pass from superiorly and it will pass in the intertubercular sulcus of the humerus. So this much is about the relations of the shoulder joint. Now we move to bursa of the shoulder joint. Plural it is known as bursae. So there are various bursae around the shoulder joint and for that bursae, if I write it over here, the bursae which are covering the shoulder joint, which are present around the shoulder joint. So we will go accordingly. The first bursae, the first bursa will be, there is presence of subscapular bursa. This is a very important bursa, subscapular bursa. Now this subscapular bursa is present between subscapularis and the capsule of shoulder joint. Second important point will be this bursa will communicate with shoulder joint. The place from where it communicates with shoulder joint will be between the superior and middle band of venohumeral ligaments. This is asked in one more question answer, viva. <coughs> subscapular bursa communicates with shoulder joint and it will communicate through the space between superior and middle Lino humeral ligaments is not down. That is subscapular bursa. Second bursa, infraspinatus bursa. This infraspinatus bursa, which is present around the infraspinatus muscle, will also communicate with shoulder joint. So both of these bursa are, I will put an arrow to signify communicating bursas to the shoulder joint. Both. Sometimes these names are asked as NCQs, the following out of which bursa is a communicating bursa to the shoulder joint. So as of subscapular bursa and infraspinatus, both of them are communicating to the shoulder joint. Now third structure. Third structure is uh, synovial sheath which is surrounding the long head of biceps. So the synovial sheath which is surrounding the long head of biceps which we have seen in previous segments of the shoulder joint. Now this synovial sheath surrounding lot of longer of biceps will pass from the capsule, from the joint. Then it will pass through the intertubercular sulcus from where it will end in the surgical neck of the humerus. 
this group is very important. So therefore, once again I repeat, the synovial sheet which is covering the long of biceps will pass through the shoulder joint, it will be transmitted through intertubercular sulcus and will end at the level of surgical neck of the uterus. Fourth structure. Now the fourth structure, the fourth bursa, coracoacromial arch, but it lies beneath the coracoacromial arch, so it is called sub acromial bursa. As we have seen in the diagram, subacromial bursa, which is present between <coughs> the subacromial bursa, which is present between supraspinatus muscle and coracoacromial arch. This is also asked in one mark question answer. The subacromial bursa is present between supraspinatus muscle and coracoacromial arch. Now, second important, very important point about this subacromial bursa is this bursa will never communicate with the shoulder joint. No. So here, I'll just put a cross. It will never communicate with the shoulder joint. Remember, please remember. It does not communicate with the shoulder joint. Third important point about subacromial bursa will be it will help in lateral rotation of humerus during overhead abduction of the arm. When your arm is raised above the level of the shoulder and above the level of the head during overhead abduction that is known as, it will provide lateral rotation of the humerus. This bursa will provide for the lateral rotation of the humerus during overhead protection of the arm. That is why this bursa is clinically very significant. <coughs> then next, there are various non-communicating bursas like subacromial bursa, which is not communicating with the shoulder joint. So, various non-communicating bursa also, which are situated around the shoulder joint. What are those bursa? So, that also you have to remember, that also you have to mark. These non-communicating bursa, which are located around the shoulder joint are, number one, bursa which is located above, above the acromial process. So there is one bursa which is located above the acromial process, non-communicating. Second, bursa which is located between coracoid process and the capsule of shoulder joint. Bursa which is located between coracoid process and the capsule of shoulder joint, which is also non-communicating. Then, next. <coughs> the bursa which is located behind the coracobrachialis muscle. So, bursa which is located behind the coracobrachialis muscle, non-communicating. Then next, we come over here. Bursa which is located in front and behind the latissimus dorsi muscle. Latissimus dorsi. The bursa which is located around the latissimus dorsi muscle in front and behind. And finally, the last non-communicating bursa, which is located between, <coughs> sorry, long head of triceps and teres major muscle. In between long head of triceps and teres major muscle, non-communicating. So, all these bursa, below the subacromial bursa and including subacromial bursa, they are non-communicating bursa, which is situated around the shoulder joint. But these names you need to mention. Now after discussing the bursae, we come to, please come on this side, we come to the arterial supply. Very interesting, this arterial supply is very important. You have to remember the name of the three arteries which supply the shoulder joint. And these three arteries as usual, you can be asked in one mark question answer, MCQs, etc. The arterial supply of shoulder joint will be, number one, <coughs> anterior circumflex humeral artery. Anterior circumflex humeral artery. Number two, very easy to remember, posterior circumflex humeral artery. Number three, suprascapular artery. Suprascapular artery. 
these three arteries very easy to remember anterior circumflex femoral artery posterior circumflex femoral artery and suprascapular artery now we come to the last part nerve supply this is also like arteries they are arcs in one more question answer mcq etc once again three nerves you have to remember these three nerves are often arcs in one more question answer the <coughs> sorry the posterior part of the capsule will be so here all right the posterior part of the capsule will be supplied by supra scapular now supra scapular now this is very important then inferior part of the capsule the inferior part of the capsule will be supplied by axillary now axillary now and here this inferior part will also include lower part of the anterior part also and finally <coughs> anterior part of the capsule including its superior and lateral portion the anterior part of the capsule including its superior and lateral will be supplied by lateral pectoral now will be supplied by lateral pectoral now these are the three nerves will supply the capsule of shoulder joint once again i repeat <coughs> posterior part of the capsule by suprascapular now inferior part of the capsule by axillary now which also supplies the part of lower part of anterior surface and the anterior part of the capsule including its uh, superior and lateral portion will be supplied by lateral pectoral now so three nerves are there suprascapular now axillary now and lateral pectoral now these are three nerves will supply the shoulder joint so here we finish as of today the relations the bursae the arterial supply nerve supply of shoulder joint thank you very much